time, and it's off to a uh, banner start. I mean, uh, yesterday I had a chance to, to go over to practice and then mosey on over to Hauser as things got started. And, uh, and, and it, it was, you know, you could sense, you could feel it. You'll hear me bring this up to Link Jarrett, who's on the show today. Uh, you'll hear me bring that up to him here shortly, uh, where we, we kind of talked about what that was, how unique that was, how amazing and different and, uh, historically cool <laughs> that was last night at, at Hauser also on the show, uh, Lottie Wode. That is the uh, Augusta National Champion, amateur champion, is uh, is what she is. In addition to being a Florida State All American, and uh, man, it was cool to talk to her too. Because how many times can you say you talk to somebody who went birdie birdie to close out at Augusta and win by a stroke? She actually birdied three of the last four. But it's a fun conversation talking with her. Florida State, very proud, and anybody certainly who knows her. And uh, Coach Amy Bond, everybody's really excited about what that program's doing. I wanted to sit down with her. Coach Bond was kind enough to arrange that, so I did. And Lottie was great. And it's great to pick the brain of a of a champion, especially somebody who's executing at Augusta National, because it's Masters Week. We talk about how busy everything is and how fun everything is. Well, then add to the party, baby. It's Masters Week. And they, of course, tee off tomorrow. And then Friday, Libations Friday. It is the Jeff Cameron Show slash War Chant uh, charity golf tournament that is always a joy to put on. My friends over at Capital City Country Club hosting again this year. And the Big Ben uh, Second Harvest uh, is the charity and Second Harvest of the Big Ben. And we, we really appreciate them, too. It's, um, it's cool how they get involved with anybody that's working to help them out as well. And so everybody wins, and it's just neat. And I look forward to teeing it up with my brother Tom Lang and, and Matt Millar, and we're going to just and everybody that's coming out and being supportive. So it's going to be a, a good time. But, uh, yeah, exhale. What a moment. Tom, yesterday I was at practice, football practice, and I'm walking over to the stadium. You know, we're, we, we all do. Uh, when you go over to Hauser, certain parts of practice, you're indoors in the indoor practice facility. Other parts you go, uh, depending on if you're watching offense, defense, or what segment of practice they're in, you go to Hauser. Well, Towards the latter stages uh, in the five o'clock hour, you began to feel the buzz at Hauser. You really did, like just the way the fans were trickling in. I really think it kind of all added up to there was blood in the water and people knew it and they knew that it would be frenzied and they knew that Florida kind of, you know, listen, we figured they'd come out and be a little scrappy. They'd lost the first two games of the season series. They had just gotten swept by Mizzou on the road in which they – choked it away in the ninth. And so you knew they'd be a little ornery and we thought, okay, but well, this would be good. Let's, let's see if we can get the season sweep. And then you found out there was word on the street that the uh, marching chiefs were going to be there. And I've never been to a baseball game in which the marching chiefs were there in attendance to play the anthem and to be part of the festivities. And so you kind of, I can't wait to see what this looks like. It's a seven o'clock first pitch and man, You'll hear in a moment. Link said it last night. He says it again with me today. Unlike anything he's ever experienced, and I thought the same as it got louder and louder and louder and it fed off of itself and the focus and the energy, it was something to behold. And now, if we're talking about adding to all of what's going on, Miami comes to town tomorrow. And so, again, another rival is in town. So, on the heels of sweeping Florida in historic fashion and by the largest margin in the history of the series, uh, now you invite Miami in. But you're also dealing with some adversity there. And it will be very interesting to see what happens. And I'll explain that in a bit. First of all, welcome to town. Good to have you back. How are you, buddy? Well, howdy. How you been? Yeah, good, That's man. how they talk where I come from, <laughs> no, New York. It's, it's not, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, the last thing I watched last night was this game. Uh, I saw it through to the run ruling, and uh, I it, did too. Who was going to walk away from that? I, well, and you know it's coming. You know what I did in the in the third inning was I looked up at what point does the run rule kick in in baseball? You're like seventh, I hope was sixth, it, maybe. I was like, yeah. well, it would be really awesome if it kicked in when it's an official game in the fifth. <laughs> it's like <laughs> final five innings, you yeah. know, 14 to three beat your ass. They ended it in the fifth. 
So how about 40, fifth. Fifth, 45 runs in three games? Oh, yeah. no, 45 runs. Not for the faint of heart. And if we didn't pull, a, I think I think we could have made it, it down. We tamped it down a little bit mm -hmm. towards the end. Mm -hmm. We could have averaged two runs an inning against Florida for the three-game series if we really pressed it. Well, so I did. Yesterday, I missed the show. First of all, I, I do need to circle back. Many of you on social media and also, by the way, friends out there who texted me that I haven't gotten back to yet. Yeah, I had a, a pet emergency in the Cameron household yesterday. My my dog, I used to have two dogs. One of them passed away a while back. Uh, Steve passed away some time ago. I, I remember, when, you know, I made that announcement on the air. Maggie, his sister, is is still with us and doing and doing pretty well. Uh, or at least she was until yesterday. She's she's a little over 12. And then she uh, we think she had a seizure. And I was prepping to do the interview with Lottie as that was getting ready to happen. And uh, it was a weird set of circumstances. Anyhow, I don't want to belabor that point. Thank you for the well wishes. And thank you for reaching out, all of you. And yeah, man, I do. I love dogs. I love animals. I'm a big pet guy. And I, I'm a big nature pet and animal guy. You guys know that. So yeah, it was, it was, it shook us to the core. She's okay. She's back at home and we're just monitoring now and we'll see what happens. But uh, it caused us to miss Seminole headlines yesterday. And that's where I was going. Today, we did an hour straight through. You can find it on the pod. You can find it on War Chant TV. Corey and I and myself got together. We were able to doff the cap to our um, our sponsors. We really appreciate, uh, obviously, Register Sausage, Birch Orthodontics, and all of you. Uh, but we, we tried to answer as many questions as we didn't get to yesterday. And we talked about the result of the game last night, just like you and I are talking about it. And we, we answered some spring football questions, too. So quickly, just uh, logistically, the video of it is available now. Don't leave. You're staying here. Come on. Hang out with us. It's going to be a good time. But it's on demand already on the channel, and then the pod is going to drop at 3 o'clock. So if you're Perfect. if you're in the headlines feeds and you're saying, where the hell is it? Yeah. 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock today is when it's going to drop in addition to uh, a bunch of other elements. We've got, The pod feeds are loaded up, too. A lot of interviews, a lot of one-on-ones, a lot, a lot of what have you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, there's plenty of there. Um so, yeah, it, it, coming up in the second segment here, I think we have Link, and then in the second hour, we have Lottie. Uh, as I said, the uh, Augusta uh, amateur uh, women's champion, and it's it's just amazing to think about uh, being that those are incredibly difficult, stress-filled shots she had to hit coming down the stretch. For those of you that watched it, you know what I'm talking about. It's interesting to hear the mindset of a person who handles that situation so well, and um, so – we don't always get that, which is great. I appreciate that. I appreciate Amy Baum, the head coach over there, uh, reaching out to do that. Um, and, and again, yeah, thanks for the well wishes. We'll see. Maggie's doing all right right now, knock on wood. When I left the house this morning, she was a better than she was yesterday. Vet helped us out. Thanks, Dr. Thabes. And we'll see what happens. So there you go. Because people have asked. So there you go. I, I, you know, listen, most of us all get that, right? You get the deal. We all have... Dogs, cats, things like that, and it, it can be tough. Yeah, you know, when they, when they, well, we're not, it's not going to be a segment about that. Nope. But when they're helpless, oh, it makes you feel, yeah, the worst because you're like, because yeah. you can't explain it to them too. You're like, okay, now listen to me. Here's what we're going to well, do. Here's the problem. And that's why you know we have a great charity we're supporting in this golf tournament on Friday in the Second Harvest of the Big Ben. But this is why a lot of people support charities that have to do with animals. Sure. Because vets perform miracles. It's it seems it's awesome. Yeah. So. Um. So I do want to say ahead of time, and and again, we'll probably break here short, short, shorter than than normally, like twenty after than we normally do, because I want to to bring the interview to you. Um, I something's wrong at Florida. You know, I've been saying this was going to happen, and you guys know why I think it's going to happen. There hasn't always been the moment where there was overwhelming evidence that it's going to happen, but. In my opinion, you can't have that guy run that program and not have that backfire on you. And I think you've seen it a couple of times, even in the midst of their successes, there have been really weird results. Remember the home regional when they were a top eight national seed and got bounced in Gainesville by a million runs? I think it was South Alabama or somebody beat their ass. And that was right on the heels of the episode that everybody is aware of. Mm. And I couldn't believe that somehow that guy was retained after all of that. And, you know, if you ever wondered what winning can do for you, it can make people overlook heinous actions. Anyhow, so I 
Man, what a job to be in that athletic department the last 30 years. You've seen a lot of things mm. if you've been in the mm. Gainesville Athletic Department the last 30 you, years. You have, you have, yeah. Really unsettling things in some circumstances. But, you know, but then he bounced back. So I'm like, all right, well, I don't, I don't know. I guess forgive and forget. Jeez, I, I guess. You know, I wondered. But I bring it up now because, Tom, I'm telling you, so those two home runs – last night to start the game for Florida. And you could see like they're locked in, they're focused, they're angry as one would be. You've been owned by Florida State this year. You're coming off of having gotten your ass swept by a sub 500 Mizzou team on the road, including a walk-off uh, on Sunday. And so you thought, all right, well, you're going to get their best shot. You're going to get their most focused as it should be, right? You, these teams, they, they fight. They've got some talent. And when the two home runs happened, I was like, all right, gather. Let's not let this get unruly to start the day. I mean, you talk about dampening the moment, right? Right after that amazing national anthem from the Chiefs. You're like, good Lord. I mean, uh, we, we don't need that. Tang, tang, right off the bat. You're like, good Lord. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping we settle and we do. And then the response is evil. I mean, Florida State's retort is, well, allow me to retort. Here are six for that ass. And – it's it's from that moment forward that you see the malaise on that look of the Florida players. They look, they're like kind of staring off in the distance, like what has happened? There was no what for, no want to, no giddy up, no fight. Our ass is in the jackpot now, okay? Indeed. And I thought, well, it's awfully early to quit, gentlemen. I mean, yeah, Florida State's going to answer. It's awfully, I, I just... I know that we look at it from Florida State's standpoint as we should, and we marvel at the dominance displayed this year from Florida State towards Florida. And we certainly celebrate what has been a massive turnaround for a baseball program that was dead in the water last year. I mean, last year it didn't take long. You had about a 10-day window where you felt pretty good about the baseball team. Somewhere around day 25, you thought, Season over. And it happened just like that. And now you look at this team and you, you think, what's off the table? What is there anything off the table? I, you know, I, again, I don't want to get too far out over the skis here, but this is an offense that plays against anybody. It is as deep and consistent. And when they put together at bats like that last night, I mean, that atmosphere didn't shake them nothing. They were locked the hell in. So, and there are guys who are getting better as the season's going. There are guys starting to emerge. Their problem is battling how good they are internally. Right. And mentally. It's a good problem. To they have. know how good they are. That's the problem they have this year now. It, it's it's an all-timer. As a lineup. Yeah. Pitching staff. Pitching still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, listen. This interview was done mere minutes before I came on uh, to start this show. So we finished up this interview within the last hour. This is me and Link Jarrett. You're going to hear it next. Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Honey, I'm home. We're in here, honey. So why are all my friends here? Have a seat, Dave. We need to talk about your problem. Attention, Florida. Are you a victim of an auto accident? We introduce our live chat sponsor, Heisen Leica Law Firm, dedicated to representing injured clients statewide. If you've been in an accident, call Heisen Leica Law Firm at 813-803-0733 for a free consultation. Remember, there's no cost to you unless they win. Your interests come first with Heisen League, a law firm, the name you can trust for justice. Call 813-803-0733 now or visit HeisenLeagueLawFirm.com. Heisen League, a law firm, your advocate in times of need. E-commerce and hosted payment solutions. Trying it true will help you reduce costs and increase your bottom line. That always sounds nice. Whether you're a retailer, restaurant, licensed professional, or service industry, Trying it true is saving you money. Trying it true's expertise extends to payroll, video menu ad boards, IT services, web design, and social media. It's time to make one call and tell the competition to take it on down the road. Call Don or Joe today at 844-464-6653. That's 844-464-6653. When you do business with Tried and True, they contribute 10% of the net revenue to the battle's end. So go Tried and True today. Call 844-464-6653. 
This is Jay of Paul's Some Item Pest Control. There are many companies out there selling pest treatment programs at prices which seem too good to be true. Like most things, you get what you pay for. Let's separate the fact from the fiction. Fiction. The price these companies offer includes all visits needed to keep a home pest-free. Fact. Their prices only include regular visits for exterior treatments. If you encounter pests inside your home, these companies will charge you for additional visits. Is that really pest prevention? At Paul's Termite and Pest Control, we always apply exterior treatments, but our plan includes a significant difference. Whenever you encounter an interior problem, Paul's technicians are there, usually the same day you call, and there is no extra charge. With ProShield, you'll never pay extra for providing the service we promised. Press prevention for your home and we'll be there as many times as needed to honor our commitment with no extra charge. Paul's Termite and Pest Control is a local company that proudly served the Tallahassee area for over 50 years. For the elimination of termites and any other pests, call Paul's. We'll get them all. And we make lawns greener too. Widden Glass has been taking care of business since 1945. When you call Widden Glass, you're dealing with experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best. Like Widden's top-of-the-line bath enclosures that provide style and luxury at an affordable price. Eye-catching storefronts are a specialty at Widden Glass. We'll help you design it and install it. Widden Glass, the first name in glass replacement. Call 222-5781. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah. You got one of those new cars that keeps you in the lane when you're driving or slams on the brakes if you get too close to another car? No, no. I don't like that fancy technology stuff. A lot of people don't. It's called lane departure warning and forward collision alert. And all that fancy stuff is attached to your windshield. So if it gets damaged, you need a qualified company like Seminole Auto Glass to replace and recalibrate your windshield. But don't call your insurance company. Just go to SeminoleAutoGlass.com and upload your insurance card. Hey, Jimmy. What? Did you know that Teslas come with a unique new car smell? They call it Elon Musk. <laughs> Better call we all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. Welcome back Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. You see the man on the screen right there. He is the head baseball coach at Florida State. He's Link Jarrett. Coach, first of all, good afternoon. Great to talk to you as always. Secondly, let's just start with your 27-5. A lot of baseball to play. Coaches always look to the next. I get it. But if I had told you before the season that this thing was going to turn around to the tune of 27-5 and five at this juncture of the season after completing a three-game sweep over Florida for the season, would you have thought that that was possible? Because you might have. I don't know. Jeff, there were moments in the fall and the preseason where I saw on the field as good of college baseball as I've ever seen. I, I really did. Then I saw sloppy stuff that concerned me, and I still see a combination of that. But the delivery and the response from the players, like you face adversity in numerous ways in this thing. You face positive experiences that you have to respond to. I thought last night's game, the environment, the fans, the marching chiefs, the energy, and the response and the delivery by our guys was as good as I've seen. So whatever the record is, it is. I have seen flashes from the moment we started preseason work and even in the fall up until last night of the college game being played at a very, very high level. I don't really care about the records. I want the guys to perform every day and be the best versions of themselves. That's what this game demands, and it's relentless. Like, if you looked at – we got back at 2.30 in the morning, Monday morning. By the time these guys got to their apartments, it was probably 3 o'clock to think of when they went to bed and had academics and stuff to, to reboot Tuesday and deliver – it's just a great response, and it was fun to watch it. For some people, last night's game might be the only game they get to come to. 
There were people <laughs> climbing up the wall, hanging on the screen in right field to get a look at this. There were students, I was told, wrapped around the parking lot that yeah. just couldn't get in to deliver the product for the people that came to this. It was really a cool moment to have the marching chiefs, David Plack, to line that up, which started as, can you play the anthem? He's like, coach, we got way more than anthem for you. They <laughs> practice in our concourses every time there's lightning in the fall. And I let them. You can practice anywhere you want. Like, yeah. come up there. So it's pretty cool. And um, just the, the matching of the on-field product to what the fans and the marching chiefs and the energy brought to the table. I coached in the biggest on-campus super regional in the history of the sport, Starkville a couple years ago. And then the Knoxville thing in 22 was the biggest one game viewing in the history of super regional baseball. Right. But the last night was better. Like the atmosphere was better last night here and the delivery of the product by the players was as good as I've seen man. Coach, I, I want to echo this for a second because I love the way you laid it out. I was covering football yesterday. I was down covering on the field. I was in the indoor practice facility. I came out and watched them do 11 on 11s. And then my next step was to – so, so I was in Hauser. And the reason I bring that up is I got to watch it build. I got to watch slowly how it built. All the things you're describing about it, fans begin to trickle in. There's a buzz in the air. There's a sense that something special could happen here tonight, a feeling that – this was going to be a unique baseball atmosphere. I've been going to games since you played at Hauser and before. And I think you're right. You don't need me to confirm it, but I think that's the most unique atmosphere at Hauser I've ever seen. I can only imagine what it was like to coach and be and play in, but watching it, I, I walked all around the stadium. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It's the best I've seen. And the, <laughs> the focus, like the guys matching what was going on externally and locking in. I've never seen them play with that kind of poise and focus and calmness. Like in what was a raucous, really neat environment, they went the other way. Like they calmed and focused. It was really special. Like it's been a long time. You know, I came in here a couple of years ago as an opposing coach, but I was trying to reflect back on my time playing. And then when I coached here for the one season way back, I don't know that I had felt it like that before. Maybe I missed it, but that was, that was top of the chart for me, man. So that's the largest margin of victory ever for FSU over Florida. You go back a long ways. I, I know it's a singular game and series and you want to show respect to your opponent, but you're an old. It had to feel really good. I, I know you don't worry about the record and you want the guys to be their best, but that that's pretty cool what just happened last night in terms of the lopsidedness and the dominance that displayed by your team against a rival. No, Jeff, it was great. Um, before we went out on the field, we always do our scouting report meeting and we talk about some of the details of leading into these games. And we knew we had won the series. Okay, so that's behind us. Every time you step on the field, you get a chance to do something special. Every time. Like, you don't know what this game may present for you. There's an opportunity to do something unique and something special every time you step out there. Clearly, going into last night and just approaching that game as this one game, win or take all, the energy, you could feel it pulsating, like, even before we went out to take pregame infield outfield. I said, you're going to have to go out there and respond and answer in this and make this night a really special moment for you. The game presents these. Clearly, this is a unique one because you get to do something to your rival that's very difficult to do. Like, they're tough to beat. Yeah, They're tough to beat twice. I don't care how you spread the games out. It's tough to do it three times in a row. And watching them, man, focus and engage – I think we were four or five pitches in and there's two home runs and we're down. These guys didn't bat an eye and Abraham didn't really bat an eye. He went right back out and continued to throw some blows. Just a remarkable in-house moment 
It really was. Yeah, I was just about to, I was going to ask you, I'm glad you answered it for me in advance. I, I wondered what it was like because obviously everybody settles in. The atmosphere is awesome. The anthem is incredible. Boom, boom, back to back home runs. And you're going, whoo, okay, Florida's a little ticked off. Let's see what happens here. But you just told me nothing changed in that dugout. No, it didn't. And it didn't really change the, the, the enthusiasm after some of the home runs. Like you could see it building, but it didn't get away from them. You know, sometimes when I say response, people always think it's you're responding to adversity. Sometimes you you can't back down because things are going well. So your response to really good moments in games is as important to your response to the negative stuff that happens. Mm -hmm. Like you've got to manage both and stay the course. And when I say best version of yourself, that's exactly what you're trying to do. But it's got to be every at-bat and every pitch and every defensive play to have the product on the field maximize itself and, and be an elite-level performance. Suffice to say, you got the response you were looking for after a couple of midweek games that I don't think you were entirely pleased with certain approaches at the plate. Uh, going back a little bit before the BC series, you kind of commented and, you know, a little frustrated, but maybe a lack of focus or concentration – and so this sounds like the antithesis of that. These were guys that were focused every at bat, no matter the situation, no matter the score. It was, Jeff. It was. Um, from the first pitch to the last. I know that the, the at bats in the last inning, we're trying to get some of these guys into that environment. And um, there's a few at bats that I know they would want over. But all in all, completely locked in. But the fans and the crowd and the Chiefs and everything and the grill and the smoke on the field and the light show, that kind of locks you in. You know, <laughs> it, it, it sure helps. Yeah. But they weren't overwhelmed by it. You know, I think there are some situations where players can be overwhelmed. And that moment, is that stage too big? Was that too much? Um, it wasn't. And again, it was one game. But it was an explosive, really good game. And now you have to go do it like tomorrow night's one game. Like, how do we answer tomorrow night? Our sport and the relentless nature of it being in your face so often. And our staff right now, like yesterday and today, we're dealing with some really serious recruiting things that we have to tend to right now as we look towards the draft and the upcoming stuff. It So for us as coaches, it's – punching you in the face all the time and the players have to answer and we have to answer as coaches. So that's our sport may not be as physically grueling and grinding and like the physical hand to hand stuff that some of the other sports, but it's the, it's the relentless. You have to answer and you have to be on point 70 times in a short period of time. It's not easy. I'm going to ask you two more questions. One of them is about the series against Miami. As you said, you got to quickly turn around against another arch rival. who's going to come in here hungry to win because they've had, a struggle as of late, so it's a short window. But I, I've always wondered this, and you can answer it, I'm sure. When did the Florida State-Florida series, which used to be, I remember doing a game, I was a color analyst with Lee Bowen when Florida State played on the road against Florida uh, and Brett Groves hit a grand slam. I was thinking back on that. That series used to be two and two. It was the best because it was almost like you had – Ones versus ones, twos versus twos, threes versus threes in the rotation. And now it's just this entirety one, one, one thing, which, it, listen, it is what it is, but I hate it. <laughs> I really wish it would go back to what it was. When did that change and why? Do you think I know? I don't, <laughs> man, I don't know. I, I don't I don't have you any idea. You know what I'm saying? You remember the way it used to be, right? I mean, that was that was fun. It used to be Tallahassee Thursday, Friday, Gainesville Saturday, Sunday, or vice versa. They just changed it every year. It was the best. Yeah, I, I don't you know. know. <laughs> um, and we also – I don't, Jeff. I'm sorry, man. There's been a lot of mileage between then Listen, and now. Listen, I put you on the watch. spot. You were long gone. That's not your fault. I just – it's always bothered me, and I've just blamed it on Florida, frankly, but I, I, I don't know. Well, I, I'll tell you, the Jacksonville game. Yeah. Well, look at last night. That was incredible. I, whether we're whether it's right or wrong, I, I don't I don't right. know. But last night, to have that kind of setting on a Tuesday night here, it's true. You're right. And it, the same thing in Gainesville, and Jacksonville was the same thing. And and playing that game in Jacksonville does bring some revenue into both programs. And the Jacksonville 
community rallies around it and they provide a great experience for our guys. So it's neat. They're tough. They're tough midweek games. Like there's no breathing room. When you throw those three in the middle of the week, Yeah, it's tough on us. It's tough on them. You know, you look at us getting back from Clemson and having to go to Jacksonville and regroup and they were at Missouri, I think. Right. And mm-hmm. they roll in here. Then you pull the weekend series forward for TV. Like this is tough. So I don't know what the right formula is. I just know the experience last night for the fans and for this on national TV to be broadcast and people to watch this and the laser light show and the marching chiefs, whatever day of the week it happened. Yeah. That was on point. Last no, week. it was, it was incredible. And I don't want to take away from what that was. You're right to point that out. I just always wondered, cause it would seem it would, it would you know, down the line, we'll talk about it another day because that was incredible. I do know this weekend, no lighter, no Whitaker. You want to give, give us insight into that just for my listeners who didn't hear you last night. What's what's happening with that? Lighter is on his way back. And Whitaker did not rebound at all. So we're doing some testing to figure out what the next step is for him. I hope we get lighter back soon. I don't know where we're going to stand with Whitaker. We need Jamie to be the best Jamie he can be. Lauk is going to be a dynamic lefty for us, and we saw Dorsey mm-hmm. handle his start really well. The neat thing, Jeff, is we do have some pieces in the bullpen. Even though we're starting three lefties, we do have with Oxford and Army and Holtz, uh, you do have some left-handed options remaining in the bullpen. And, you know, we, we have some righties on the other side of it. So Lighter's on the way back. Ben Barrett is trending back. I know it's been a while for him, but all of a sudden that guy's going to be lurking back out there, and that's a positive, and Lighter's going to be okay, and we'll figure Witt out. Uh, the Yankees are going through it. The Braves are going through it. You know, I know they have a farm system to adjust their roster. We don't. That's why pitching depth. Of all the things we're doing with our recruiting right now as we speak, at, this is happening right now accumulating pitching depth is probably the most important piece of the whole equation for us. I love to hear it, Coach. Thanks for the insight, and thanks for the time on such a busy day. Go do your work. Appreciate you. We'll talk again down the road and reflect on the season. Pulling for the Pirates for you, Jeff. I I like that. I appreciate that, Coach. Take care. That's Link Jarrett, head coach, Florida State, on the heels of an amazing night at Dick Hauser Stadium As lopsided a win as Florida State's ever had over Florida, it's a season sweep. It is a butt kick in times 10. It is unreal to think about what the Knowles did to the University of Florida this year and really, frankly, much of the opposing pitching they've seen. Now it's Miami, and they're a little short-staffed, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. We do appreciate him making time today because he is extremely busy, as you noted. Knowles rolling right now. Jeff Cameron, Show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Local news now. A Tuesday afternoon's meeting, Leon County commissioners accepted nearly $2.4 million in settlement funds from an opioid lawsuit. The money comes from drug manufacturers, distributors, and retailers who help fuel the nationwide opioid epidemic. This is the first installment of a total of $11.6 million in settlement funds allocated to Leon County over the next 18 years. FSU and the ACC faced off in the Leon County courtroom Tuesday as a two clash over media rights and exit fees. The ACC asked for FSU's case to be put on hold until the North Carolina case is completed. Judge Cooper ultimately denied the motion to stay the case. Florida State fights to get out of its agreement with the ACC. Not only would the university owe upward of $130 million, it would not retain its media rights if the ACC has its way. Another hearing is set for Monday, April 22nd at 9.30 a.m. This is Rachel and A with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. A flood watch begins at 4 p.m. this afternoon. A wind advisory begins at 8 p.m. tonight. Daytime highs approaching 80 this afternoon. Under cloudy skies, southerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Cloudy again tonight. Severe storms likely lows around 68. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Currently, it's 78 degrees. What do you need tires on? Your car or truck? Tractor or heavy equipment? At Nice Tire and Auto Service, we have tires for all of these needs. And we service your vehicle from air conditioning and computerized alignment to oil changes and everything else under the hood. Call Nice Tire and Auto today at 574-4100. 
That's 574-4100 for your scheduled maintenance. National Accounts Welcome at Nice Tire and Auto Service. 4792 Bluntstown Highway, just west of Capitol Circle. There is no Bigfoot, Eddie. Would you stop with that nonsense? There's a Bigfoot, Jeff. I wish there were. By the way, I don't want you to point to me as the guy that takes all the fun out of the room. I wish there was the Loch Ness Monster. I wish there was the Bigfoot. I wish there was the Chupacabra. I, all this, all the things. They're all mythical except for the Bigfoot. The Sasquatch. The Bigfoot? The Bigfoot. There's, there's, there's big feet. There's lots of them. So, like, different... You know, breeds like different well, yeah, kinds. There's of, yeah. all, there's like you know families. There's yeah. different families. And, so you know, there's the there's if the, they're in the snow, you call them a sasquatch or the yeti, right? Yeah. And then yeti, and then, yeti, and then yeti. here in Florida, that's a skunk ape. And you know, they're, but I've never heard that one. By the way, why do you think it's real? We would have found them by now. They're the hide and seek champions of the world. <laughs> Nobody finds the Bigfoot. But I think you believe in Bigfoot. I do believe in Bigfoot. You don't believe. I in believe Bigfoot. in Bigfoot. Don't look, tell anybody you believe in Bigfoot. I would go look for Bigfoot, but he scares me. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the WarChant.com Multimedia Network. Check out WarChant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's WarChant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3. Jeff Cameron Show rolling on our appreciation to Link Jared. He's busy today. Stopped, made time. And it's fun to talk to him because he's thorough. And, you know, I you'll hear it later when you guys check in on um, headlines. Corey and I and Ira were talking a little bit about it. I know that Corey did on Wake Up as well. It, kind of like the changing of the tide, right? You know, the the programs seem to be going in different directions. Now, that is a, a, a singular moment last night. That was, you know, it's not necessarily an illustration uh, because of that one game of what's about to happen. But it, it seems to me that that trend is is happening for other reasons besides that Florida looks a little bit to be in a mess right now because of young pitching. They got a lot of young pitching. It's not responding well. But I, I, I think there's a personality issue there. And and I, I think unless you're winning big, it's not okay. It's not it's not great to be around O'Sullivan on a regular basis. Um I, I don't know anybody that's like, yeah, I can't wait to go see that guy today. So, you know, you if you're winning at an elite level, you put up with an awful lot. That's true of coaches in any sport. You see it, you know, there are tyrants that players don't necessarily like, but if I get to play for championships, all right, I'll live with it, you know. But as soon as it goes south and you're dealing with that same tyrant, you're like, yeah, no, man, this, this ain't it. I got to deal with this every day and we suck. <laughs> it's not cool. Um, let alone the situation off the field. Uh, but if you, if you turn the spotlight back on us, the detail that I'm referencing with which Link Jared operates on a regular basis portends of consistency. Now we'll see if it ends up being a championship or, Multiple championships. Hey, dream big. It's hard to win those, and you need a lot of luck even when you're really, really good. We've seen that. But you can just put yourself in positions, and I think Florida State's back to being able to put themselves annually in position to uh, to have an opportunity uh, to win the ultimate prize. And I think it's, it links attention to detail and passion for the sport in school, and then I think the ability right now to get yeses from big-name recruits. You're seeing it. See, this is not – like, hey, look, we're having a good year because of all these transfers, et cetera, that we added to the few that stayed back and were really good last year during a bad season. It's because they're also getting yeses from, you know, you know, the, the equivalent of five-star elite level high school prospects, you know, six, six first basemen and, and that kind of a thing and more pitchers. And I think that the replenishment of the roster on an annual basis seems to be sustainable given the way that the door is opening again for Florida State in the way of access to the better players. And it's it's something that the bigger programs, Tom, can do. Like, go back to football. Now, that too is a changing landscape, but most programs that have a rich history, that have an awful lot of cachet, have a quicker path back to their greatness of yesteryear than programs that have never experienced it. So go see Bob Stoops when he took over Oklahoma. Oklahoma was a mess, had been down for a long time. We all know the story. Next thing you know, in a couple of seasons, Oklahoma's winning the national championship, most unfortunately over us. Okay, it happened. And then from there, even though that was the only one he won, played for others and was consistently good. 
But Oklahoma had a really rich history. Alabama, for a very long time, did next to nothing. Nick Saban comes in. Now, Gene Stallings was the blip on the radar exception, but you had, you know, obviously Shul and DeBose and all these guys. Didn't work out at all. The right guy comes in, taps into that rich history, stirs up the echoes, and people are donating again, and they're all in. Boom, back to winning at a level that, well, Nick Saban has obviously been superior to everybody. Florida State's been that way at the end of the Bowden time. And, you know, when Jimbo came in and kind of modernized things and got some fresh blood in there, Florida State, because of its rich history and the successes of Bobby Bowden, it quickly turned around. Now, there are other factors, but historically speaking, if you've been something, if you've been a name program, if you've been elite, and then suddenly you go, you go down, you go south, you're not what you once were, to get it back just takes the right guy, the right spark, the right vision. Whereas if you're starting from scratch from a place that's never had it, it takes longer. It's more difficult to you know ingrain in people that this is where you're headed. What's interesting to me about this group is you're right. They are bringing in a lot of top flight talent from high school, and that's good. They're closing it. They're doing a good job of closing on it. But as NIL becomes more across all sports and, and maybe – for Olympic sports or, or non-major revenue sports like football and basketball, it the bubble bursts a little bit. I don't know what the future is for yeah, a sport like yeah. baseball or softball or soccer. Like well, You know, it's not great in this conference long term because of the money disparity, so there's that. that. That is what I'm getting at here is it's impressive to me that they brought in this much talent. And I, I mean, I know we've got resources in football. Ah, beyond that, I mean, it feels like all hands have been on deck for football. Certainly aren't signing a top five basketball class anytime soon. You know what I mean? So it's very impressive that he's able to do this. And I wonder how much perhaps a night like last night can do for the program when it comes to funds, the gray and white haired folks that walk in, that can do something about it and help next year and say, well, this reminds me of 96 link. How about a check for $150,000? <laughs> how about yeah, that check? Right. Yeah, yeah. I just wonder how that plays into this roster building because we know from Mike Norvell, you had the pandemic first, then the transfer portal and NIL. And it's like, okay, one thing changes the world for a period of time. So you can't go into high schools physically and recruit kids, forge a relationship with coaches. Now that time has passed. All right, now this portal thing is going to get a little out of hand. I don't know. Maybe you can use it. Maybe you can't. Also, we're going to pay the players. Let's see how you can build your roster with these three fundamental things that are hurdles to your operation. He's found a way to use them all to his advantage. Link has, I don't know how he's gotten this roster this good, this quickly. Uh, this is really something because that pitching staff, I know they're banged up this weekend, but as I've said a bunch this year, they've got stuff. Like Brady Lauk, they should be excited about. I know Abraham had a rough night last night. They mm -hmm. should be excited about him, Hudson Rowan, all these dudes. Where the hell did they get them all? Because they they project very nicely over the next couple. Of years. Well, Michael Posey was a really good Posey was a really good hire, and I think that projects well. Uh, and I I think Link obviously does a very good job of assessing what a player is, what they can become. He has a very set. Um, uh, a, a very distinct set of ideas of that what he wants a player to be and how they fit in. You can you can through player evaluation and expertise in recruiting and connections probably dodge some of the uh, proverbial bullets of uh, NIL uh, inefficiencies um, in baseball uh, when you're facing SEC teams because nobody's got more money, for example, in the SEC for baseball than LSU, and LSU just won the national championship. They're also on the cusp of not making the postseason this year. It's am amazing to watch what's what's happening. But that's what's so bizarre. You're competing in that marketplace. We don't think about baseball that way, but yeah. it is. Yeah. You, you are competing in a marketplace. Well, and and when because of the excess money that the SEC and and now the Big Ten will have, uh, you know, it's got to go somewhere, and it'll go into stadiums, and it'll go into coaching staffs, and it'll go into recruiting. And yes, baseball uh, trends in that direction as it's one of the big three. I don't I do think you can get away with some things in baseball a little bit longer than you could football. But at the end of the day, and per the good news yesterday for Florida State in the courts for now, uh, you know, let's just see what happens. I think you could sustain it for another couple of years if you had to. This year certainly being one of them, and next year too. I think it, they, they project nicely. Now they're gonna lose a lot of people off this team, but they also got some talent coming in, and he'll be adding to it. Uh, it helps too that you were able to convince 
and I want to give a lot of credit to people like this, you know, think about Tibbs deciding to, yeah. to stay yeah. here. Mm-hmm. I mean, that what made the, just a little difference. Oh, I mean, <laughs> the season he's having, the player he is, he's potentially the player of the year in the ACC. He's on a short list of players that you would look at for national player of the year. So he's he's been that kind of good. By the way, he's also gotten better out and right. You know, he was a train wreck, and now he's yeah. adequate, a little bit more than adequate. So I think, I think when you have a superstar in your lineup and then you see the emergence of another superstar, a, a surefire MLB player in Cam Smith, and how he he got much better than he was a year ago. He mm-hmm. also has improved defensively by leaps and bounds. Um, now you have some core people in your lineup that decided not to run for the hills when things went south, when the new guy came in. You know, they could have very easily said, I'm not starting over. I don't care what this guy's reputation is. It's been a miserable experience for me here, and I'm going to go take it elsewhere because I can fit right in, and I'll be a star, and I'll have protection in the lineup, and, you know, I'll probably have my best year. They chose to stay back and believe. And that it goes a long way. Uh, I think Link and his staff would say that they uh, they owe those young men, just as those young men would say that they owe the coaching staff an awful lot. It's um, there's just it's overnight, you know. And and the previous head coach, Meet, got screwed by the pandemic. They were off to a decent start in twenty. Yeah. And then you know, just I, I, that doesn't help matters when you're trying to get off the ground. That's what makes Norvell's uh, perseverance really something to behold and remarkable. And it's unassailable, really. Mike Norvell's ability to overcome what he just had to do at Florida State. He didn't get the benefit of the first and second signing class that most guys do when they take a job in Gainesville or they take a job in Coral Gables or Tallahassee. There's a bump that comes with that. He didn't get it, but he found a way to succeed anyhow. With Link, this just this is instant. This I, I know what last year was. We won 23. I get it. I get it. We won nothing. This is instant. This roster flip was quick, and you could tell that there is continuity, meaning that when these guys leave and take their slots in the draft and their and their slot money, you've got other answers ready to go. Like this thing happened very, very fast, and they do look like they can replenish. And I love how he is very urgent about getting more pitching in here. But when you're looking at, you know, the football program and its resurgence and its return and its climb and baseball. There are some serious similarities in the coach, but the circumstances are very, very different. It's and, and so is the timing. Hey, by the way, on the subject of Mike Norvell football, we've got some conversation to have around that. I was at yesterday's practice. I have some observations that I want to get to to start the next hour. We also have the Lottie Wood interview that we're going to do fresh off of her win at Augusta National. Uh, but but something to note here, I don't know if you saw Bill Connolly's article on uh, the 30 coaches who will define the next decade of college football. You could guess very easily by that headline that Mike Norvell would be included in that list. And yes, in a hurry, he was. And they talked about there are tiers of this. Successful head coaches with plenty of tread left on the tires, for example, is a category. So you could guess the first one on that list would be Kirby Smart. He's young enough, he's uber successful, and he's still hungry, so he'd be there. Kalen DeBoer, fresh off of Washington, going to Alabama, would be on that list. Steve Sarkeesian doing it with Texas is on that list. Lane Kiffin, to some degree, is on that list, although I would have looked at that and said, "Mm." Ryan Day is on that list. Luke Fickle is on that list now with Wisconsin. But he wrote the most exciting younger head coaches, and he he kind of prefaced it and said, never mind the 50 and under crowd. These are 42 and under, and they've accomplished more than the six guys I've listed above before they were the age they are now. And ah, so there you go saying, Hey man, nice. we're going to do a lot of names before we get to Mike. So the two that I knew he would name given those parameters are the top two. And those are the right two. It's Dan Lanning. Who's only 35 years old at Oregon, which when people ask me when Mike was on the precipice of taking the Alabama job. And and seems to me that outside of Dan Lanning would have been their first choice. When he if he had taken it, I would have been like throw the kitchen sink at Dan Lanning is what I wanted to do. Young, smart, can recruit, fiery. I would have said it, let's go. I'm not ready for that. I, I, we didn't have to do it. No, I'm not ready for that because he'd be the first Florida State head football younger coach. Younger than you. Younger than me. Well, Mike's younger than me. That's it, effed up, dude. <laughs> oh, it's no, gonna happen, buddy. That's where you're headed. This is where you're headed. Not, not like this. Not now. <laughs> not when I'm 37 years old. You're bringing a 35-year-old. Get out of here. So Mike is 42, and this is cool, and I'll read it to you as we go to break. 
Norvell already has nearly a decade of head coaching success on his resume. He won 38 games with an AAC title and two ranked finishes at Memphis, then took on a dire situation at FSU where he improved the Knolls from 3 to 5 to 10 to 13 per SP+. Plus. Both the offense and defense have improved every single year under Norvell's watch. His track record of adding stars through the transfer portal is as impressive as anybody's in the game, and if they have the right quarterback, the Knolls, could be ACC champions again in 2024. And that's the question. I'd say that's correct. Now, he's been flashing some serious skill refinement, or is that too far to go? Maybe that's- Well, he looked good yesterday. He had a good throw, uh, probably one of his best throws of the uh, spring so far, right in front of me, and he dropped it in a bucket, bucket to Landon Thomas, and it was just oof, impressive. But I have a a growing concern that I want to address. Oh. Not about DJ, but a growing concern that I it's just now kind of popped up on the radar here, and there are a lot of circumstances that add up to this. It's not about Landon Thomas, is it? No. Good. It's not about good. Landon Thomas. That's, that's, he looked good that's yesterday. My guy. No, no. It's just, just something that two fingers to my eyes, two fingers back to them that I'm watching. It's Jeff Cameron Show 93.3, Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Don't forget next hour. The Augusta National Women's Champion, Amateur Champion, Lottie Woe, going to join us on the Jeff Cameron Show as well. You probably already know that Pinch a Penny Pools and Spas is your one-stop destination for all pool maintenance needs, offering everything you need from chemicals, cleaners, vacuums, nets, and more. But that's not all. Pinch a Penny also carries a huge selection of premium hot springs, hot tubs, paired with easy financing options, making these luxury hot tubs affordable for everyone. And if you have an older hot tub and you're worried about the hassle of removing it, worry no more. Pinch a Penny will not only remove and haul away your old hot tub, but also offer a trade-in value for a credit towards your new one. So why wait? Visit Pinch a Penny's 12,000 square foot showroom today on Greer Road and discover how effortless and affordable owning a fantastic hot tub can be. Find out more at TallahasseeHotspring.com. That's TallahasseeHotspring.com. I'm Greg Tish here to share one of my favorite TCC stories. In the summer of 1966, Eugene Lamb wanted to stay in shape before leaving to play college basketball in Louisiana. So he jogged to Tallahassee from his home in Midway and helped lay the bricks for the first building on what's now the TCC campus on Apple Yard Drive. Today, he is a longtime member of the TCC District Board of Trustees. It's no exaggeration when we say Trustee Lamb helped build TCC into what it is today. TCC thanks our community for 58 years of support. We look forward to moving into the future together. Social Kitchen is now open on Cary Forest Parkway near Ology Northside, Tallahassee's only premier market where you can receive the famed Snake River Farm steaks and premier meats. Social Kitchen also has chef-prepared meals and sides ready to serve in just under 20 minutes. Perfect for those very busy springtime weeks, weekends, you name it. Hosting some people at the house. Hey, Social Kitchen also has build-your-own charcuterie boards and catering. Stop in and visit Social Kitchen today or visit us online at socialkitchentlh.com socialkitchentlh.com. Have you been injured on I-10? I'm Dana Brooks of Facing Brooks Law Offices. We partnered with Roadproof to access all interstate traffic camera footage along I-10 from Pensacola to Jacksonville. Memories fade and witnesses disappear. Securing important video footage now can make sure your claim receives the full attention it deserves. Call us today and let us secure the proof you need to come back stronger. Facing Brooks, 850-777-7777. Offices Destin, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, Happy Hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. 
latest betting odds and line movements from Vegas. This is your action update. Now, here are your latest lines from our guys in the desert. Zach Littell, the mound for the Tampa Bay Rays this afternoon. A dollar twenty-two road favorite of the LA Angels, plus 102. Griffin Canning for the Angels, nine flat the total. The Braves are a dollar fifty-five home favorite with Alan Winans on the mound against Jose Quintana of the Mets, plus 130. Nine and a half over the total at Truist Park. North Florida, a home dog today against Wofford. The Terriers out of the Southern Conference in Spartanburg, South Carolina. A dollar sixty favorite against the Osprey, plus one twenty-four. UCF, a dollar forty favorite in Deland against Stetson. The Hatters are the plus one ten money line underdog. Free betting splits available at vsin.com slash splits. For more sports betting news and information, go to VSIN.com. Mike Sennett, Real Talk, 93.3. Timmy, everybody. Great job. Next up, we have Samantha. Ten times better performance can make a big difference. Castrol Edge Motor Oil gives your engine ten times better high temperature performance. Castrol Edge, better oil for maximum performance. Now through April 23rd, get a $15 gift card when you buy five or more quarts of Edge or Edge High Mileage Full Synthetic only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Claim based on Sequence 3H test versus API SP test limits. Marcus is a connoisseur of anything that's free, so he was happy to read the disclaimer on TurboTax Free Edition. Roughly 37% of taxpayers qualify. Form 1040 and limited credits only. See how at TurboTax.com. <laughs> that's me! File your taxes 100% free with TurboTax Free Edition and get your max refund guaranteed. See if you qualify to file for free at TurboTax.com. See max refund guarantee details at TurboTax.com slash guarantees. Tallahassee Music and Bike Fest is back from April 11th to the 14th at Appalachie Regional Park. Scheduled events include daily live music, e-bike tracks for kids, Harley Davidson demos, sound competitions, full throttle bike show, and countless vendors and activities. The event is free and open to the public with proceeds from raffles and beer sales donated to Honor Flight Tallahassee. Check out the full music and event schedule at tallybikefest.com. That's tallybikefest.com. You probably already know that Pinchapenny Pools and Spas is your one-stop destination for all pool maintenance needs, offering everything you need from chemicals, cleaners, vacuums, nets, and more. But that's not all. Pinchapenny also carries a huge selection of premium hot springs, hot tubs, paired with easy financing options, making these luxury hot tubs affordable for everyone. And if you have an older hot tub and you're worried about the hassle of removing it, worry no more. Pinchapenny will not only remove and haul away your old hot tub, but also offer a trade-in value for a credit towards your new one. So why wait? Visit Pinchapenny's 12,000 square foot showroom today on Greer Road and discover how effortless and affordable owning a fantastic hot tub can be. Find out more at TallahasseeHotspring.com. That's TallahasseeHotspring.com. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Hot. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
it rolling on. Buzz still in the air, fresh off a thorough thrashing of the University of Florida in embarrassing fashion, I might add, for Florida. Goodness gracious, they were powerless, powerless to stop anybody from scoring. Well, certainly Florida State. It was a night of ping, ping, ping. Every time you looked up, oh, it looks like that's going to be an oppo bomb. Well, oh. that's, uh, yeah, it, there were many moments. Ooh. Oh, over and over and over again. You could have, you could have played the epic and again and again and again. It was, it was certainly something. And I love the moment, you know, the, the moment that the cameras caught the incredulous, the, 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 the faces on the Florida players as they recognize what was being done to them on this night. Mm, mm, mm. So it is 19 to four, and that is a margin of victory you don't see every day. And it is, as you know, enough to run rule a bitch. And they did it again. Twice. Twice in the same season for a series is something to behold. Goodness gracious. Link Jarrett joined us last hour. If you missed that, go back and find it. It's on Warchant TV. It'll be in the pod later. It's you know, all the places. This hour, Lottie Woad winning at Augusta. An amazing feat. And what a what a moment for Florida State and certainly for her. And it was uh, a cool moment for me to be able to talk to her. Think about the significance of Lottie Woad winning there. Women playing there, first of all, were only a few years removed from a time that the only thing they could clean up weren't trophies, but rather the tables after the men ate. And now there she is dominating and winning. And I say dominating, I should say winning one by a stroke, but it's, it's incredible to watch her down the stretch. It's incredible to see. And I, I'm glad that today, I don't know how much of uh, well, you didn't get a chance. You were traveling, but I, I've, I've watched uh, live from the masters this week on the golf channel, of course, and a lot of questions uh, always uh, about players and about the situation in golf that we all know between PGA tour and live. And then also Augusta national in general, I had it on in first class. Uh, Nicely just, done, just so sir. You know, That's a yeah. nice flex. Yeah, I got bumped. That was this was not a, a out of pocket. Well, you don't have to add that. Just say I had it on a well, first class, I'll Jeff. Say, yeah. I'll be I'll stay true to my roots. But uh, uh, yeah, I had it on a first class, and, and between working on the laptop, I was looking at old Rich Lerner and Brandel talking about different golf. Yeah, but did you also see the interview with what's his face, who I loathe, um, mm. head of? Augusta, There's been a few of those. Uh, the head of Augusta National, Fred the Ridley. I believe that was who it was. Yeah. Uh, I always, it's not it's not Hootie anymore. No, who I also loathe. Uh, but Fred's a little bit more tolerable. Um, and yeah, they were asking questions. Sir, he is a gentleman. <laughs> I do not understand. <laughs> Might I interest you? Um, he uh, he he. Anyway, I was talking about the, the, the what a boon that's been for them. By the way, it's it's been amazing. Like the response to women playing there in the amateur tournament is is remarkable. I would like to play it such that on, uh, let's see, down the stretch, the last five holes at Augusta National. One putt 14, one putt 15. Mm. Should have made the putt on 16. Right, should have birdied the last four holes. Instead, you birdied three Tap of the last four holes. Putt. One putt 17, one putt 8. I mean, good Lord. That's how you finish. One putt 18 with the tournament on the line. That's right. Just, Jeez, just yeah. a wee bit of pressure. She'll join us next segment. Back to football. I teased by mentioning that, uh, you know, I've got a growing concern. Now, you got to take this with a grain of salt unless I tell you not to. There are some things they just come out and tell you, this is bad, has to get better, I'm concerned. I don't beat around the bush. You guys know that. There are other things where I say, you know, I'm, I'm beginning to get a little perturbed by, worried about type thing. And then there are still others that I, I just project. I'm just... Hey, listen, you know what? Based on years of experience and doing this job and watching teams come and go, I kind of feel like they're going to have a hard time doing this. They're going to be great at that. And then uh, here's what's the unknown. So there's, they, they fall in categories, these concerns or these observations. And this is not one in which you go and press the red button and say, Cameron said today that they can't do this and we're, we're done. <laughs> First of all, anything that happens in spring, barring, a season-ending injury 
is something that can be improved upon, is something that can get better at, is something that they can find answers for. So unless a guy is lost for the season, knock on wood, unfortunately, that does happen. It is the game of football. Uh, Unless that happens, it's something that can be fixed or worked around. Certainly it can be acknowledged because it's being observed. So once it's acknowledged, we live in the day and age in which a coaching staff could say, you know, we really don't have an answer here. Guess what? The transfer portal exists. There are kids everywhere that could fill that role. Let's start messing with other people's rosters illegally. And uh, you can. You can. So we should make this a segment, Briley, Jeff's Wednesday's worries. But they're not without merit. I don't take it lightly. I don't just willy-nilly decide this is not a fixed position feature. This is not a sponsored segment where even on a day in which I don't have something, I've got to conjure something. This is not that. This is legitimate. The ball's on the ground too much. The ball is on the ground too much. I'm tired of it. I'm getting a little pissed off. The ball's on the ground too much. Good throws are not being caught consistently enough, period. Now, there's a lot going on in this camp, and there's newness everywhere. New offense for the starting quarterback, who himself is new. New faces on the other end of those catches or throws, I should say, that are being asked to make those catches that have not been depended upon in the past or are from entirely different programs also learning a new offense. So I make room for the idea that there's a lot on the minds of these young men trying to make the plays. And it does affect you. We talk about you can't play fast if you're thinking. I also think it's hard to just execute the simplest of things if you're thinking a lot. You know, like, Something that comes natural to you, like catching a football or running or jumping or whatever it might be, the process gets encumbered and slowed down to a degree by thoughts of all the other stuff. Am I running the right route? Is this the right read? Is this what my cue is for this when he does this and the safety shaded here? But I go here because you see it. And Mike is very animated. As a former receiver, Mike is very animated. A guy can make a play and it might be the wrong play. He made the catch. Play looks good, and Mike's losing it because it was the wrong route. Or guy could do the right thing and not catch it, and you think he's going to be mad, and Mike's like, that's what I'm talking about. That's it. Catch the ball. But but by the way, there it is. You know, So he's not as mad as you thought because it was the right read, the right response, just didn't catch the ball. So all of it is taken into account when I'm assessing things. But when we go – and I did not see the scrimmage, so I don't know. They could have caught everything that was thrown at him and you know, probably would have changed my opinion. I, I don't know. But the practices we go to, the ball hits the ground too often, and I'm talking about catches that should be made. It's not like, oh, DJ missed him. It's not that kind of the ball is hitting the ground too often because that's, you know, that's a different conversation. The guys are getting open, but DJ keeps missing them. Is an entirely different conversation. I'm glad that's not the conversation because given his completion percentage, you worry about yeah. these things. Yeah, you're right. So I want to make it abundantly clear. This is not the direct uh, result of a quarterback making poor throws. This is not because the guy is not reading it right and he's late. You know, that's another concern. When quarterbacks are late, that really worries me because late often means points the other way or guys getting blown up. So this is really just more about some younger guys not consistently catching the ball, some veteran guys who are going to be asked to do more but really have never had to be the guy not catching the ball as consistently as you'd like. Just some, just too many drops, in my opinion. Uh, we'll see. I, 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 I don't walk out of those practices going, oh, my God, they can't catch. But I do walk out of those practices saying, man, they – left five or six big plays on the field today because they just couldn't bring the ball in. Um, You know, at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you that I think that they'll be fine. I still believe that. I still think that they have the requisite talent in order to be good. Uh, Nobody's lacking athleticism or speed or size. They've got versatility in that segment group. Like almost just like the running backs, the running backs are so versatile. You got, size like sheer mass and cam davis he's a monster right and he's fluid then you've got the overall package um of like two or three different guys that can really do it all right they can run between the tackles they can catch the ball they can they can you know they block they do a lot of things very very well so 
again, just something to take note of here. I like there to be context before I hit you over the head with something that I believe finally to be a very real concern or a moment where I think that things have been elevated. I don't want it to come out of left field. I want you to know that as we go along, hey, this is what I'm observing. These are some of the things that I see and I like and don't like so that that way I don't just walk in on a Monday and go, you know what? This has been a problem all month. And then they're like, what? You haven't mentioned it yet. You haven't said one word that we can't catch the ball. Why You could have given us a hey. Getting a little worried. Here's my hey. Let's catch the ball. Let's catch the ball. That's, that's all. Let's let's catch the ball. So it's kind of like driving down three consecutive stoplights in Tallahassee and not seeing a Zaxby's. Like, hey, hey, all right. I'm sure there's one at this fourth <laughs> light. I'm sure there's one at this fourth light, but I'm a little concerned here. Where's my Zaxby's? Now, it's hard to say that in Tallahassee, Florida, when there are 79 Zaxby's. Oh, Good number. I bet you like that number a lot. 1979, number 79. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great number. Great number. And that's true, too, when you're looking for a Zaxby's. Well, there are 79. Pull it up on your phone. There's sure to be one near you. Yeah. So, Or just yell, Zaxby's, out the window. And so we're like, over here. Over here to the right. Uh, yeah. Delicious Zach, uh, Zaxby's, and uh, we always appreciate their support and their food. Tallahassee Zaxby's, proud Golden Chief boosters for over 19 years. No, don't, don't, don't overreact to my reaction. That's what you guys do. Don't do that now. I'm trying to talk calmly with you here that we're dropping too many passes. You, you've got, so you're De Niro, a little bit. A little bit yourself. Dropping the ball a little bit yourself. A little bit. A little bit. No, 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 no. You're not, you're not Pesci. No, you're no. You're trying to play intermediary uh, uh, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a little out of line yourself. Yep. Uh, no, I am. I'm trying to say, like, yesterday was the day kind of where I was, I because I jot notes all throughout when I'm out there, because I, I, I don't want to forget anything. I want to go back and look at my notes after each practice so that the next day when I do the show, I can make these points or I can – you know, it, it could a lot of times it's positive. Lately, it's mostly been positive. Like, this kid's really coming along. I really love to watch Otto and the way his growth is on the offensive line. I think obviously sliding Mar Armella inside was the right move. I love the potential in this secondary. Every time I look up, Earl Little Jr. looks like a guy that's going to be a stud at that NB position there. You got the, you know, you look around, you kind of just over and over. You're like, oh, well, that works. Oh, man, we have a number of guys that could play this role. We're going to be all right. Most of it's been positive. But when I looked back at my notes at the end of yesterday and went back to the previous week, I was like, man, there's one too many times that I'm noting they dropped too many passes. Today, they dropped too many passes. Today, they dropped too many passes. Period. Yeah. Not an exclamation point. Yet. No, just a period. Too many drops. It, it also didn't turn into catch the damn ball. Well, there, that, that will be an all caps thing. And my kids have heard that and they'll hear that when I'm dead and gone. When we first started out, when I was teaching them how to catch and throw, and, you know, you, you, you allow for the fact they're little and eye hand coordination is something to take some time. But we got to a place where if you drop two or three in a row, you were going to hear, catch the damn ball. Let's go. Lock it in. Catch the ball. There's many other things I got to teach you. Catch the ball. This is basic. So, so, <laughs> so you yeah, catch the ball and then we can talk about all the other stuff. Mike's not going to come out, Briley, and say on uh, in the press conference or the after practice roundup, you know, we're really just dropping a ton of balls. He's not going to do that. He's not going to say, um, yeah, he's 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 mentioned it, and when he mentions it, then you have to know it's bothering him. The fact that he even mentioned it, why did it come up? Yes, he's going to say to the press, that's something we got to clean up. Well, what's he supposed to do? Jump up and down? You don't want to do a thou protest too much. You don't no. want to get in guys' heads and make it. But listen. That's not his style either. It is not his style to do that. He's very much in second gear in post-practice press conference. Well, he's also contemplative. He's thinking back. He also wants to go back and look at the tape because they do. At the end of every practice, they go back and look at the tape. And sometimes they find out that something they saw was an outlier and not something that was a problem throughout the practice. And if they overreact because it was on, you know, on the top of their mind and say something to the press, they'll regret that. That's not, but they're thoughtful that way. So the fact that he did bring it up and has brought it up as something we need to clean up tells you he's getting a little miffed in the same way I am. Mike, I see you, buddy. Catch the ball, boys. Also, it's really disappointing when a guy gets it right and when DJ delivers it on time 
and it's right there and you drop that sticks with you a little bit. So it's happening every play. <laughs> when I first told you Johnny Wilson liked to drop the football, a lot of you got mad at me. You're like, oh, stop. Well, why so negative? I'm telling you, he likes to drop a football now. And then you saw it for yourself and you're like, yeah, he, he does drop the football. But this is like that. I said he does a lot of other things really well. And as long as that percentage creeps up each time, we're going to be okay. But there's going to be the occasional, can you believe he dropped that? Mike Evans is a very effective football player. I knew we'd make it to Mike Evans somehow. Whose fingers. <laughs> she won at Augusta as an amateur. She is a first team All-American at Florida State. And she was on the Jeff Cameron show yesterday when i interviewed her and you're going to hear that next lottie woe jeff cameron show 93 three real talk radio war chant tv attention florida are you a victim of an auto accident we introduce our live chat sponsor heisen Leka law firm dedicated to representing injured clients statewide if you've been in an accident call heisen Leka law firm at 813-803-0733 for a free consultation remember there's no cost to you unless they win your interests come first with Heisen Legal Law Firm, the name you can trust for justice. Call 813-803-0733 now or visit HeisenLegalLawFirm.com. Heisen Legal Law Firm, your advocate in times of need. Business that specializes in payments and business solutions. Try to choose core expertise includes card, ACH, point of sale, mobile, e-commerce, and hosted payment solutions. Try to true will help you reduce costs and increase your bottom line. That always sounds nice. Whether you're a retailer, restaurant, licensed professional, or service industry, try to true is saving you money. Tried and True's expertise extends to payroll, video menu ad boards, IT services, web design, and social media. It's time to make one call and tell the competition to take it on down the road. Call Don or Joe today at 844-464-6653. That's 844-464-6653. When you do business with Tried and True, they contribute 10% of the net revenue to the battle's end. So go tried and true today. Call 844-464-6653. I'm Robert, and I'm a general pest technician at Paul's Termite and Pest Control. I have a fantastic job working for an amazing company. Every day, I take great satisfaction in knowing the work I do helps protect the health of the customers I'm honored to serve and their pets, too. Many are now my friends. Paul's is a local North Florida-based company, and they are constantly teaching all of us techs about the ever-changing needs of our unique part of the world. I'm Jay, and having the privilege to work with people like Robert and all of our employees is truly an honor. There is no doubt that the staff of Paul's Termite and Pest Control is the best in our industry. All of our people are local, and local really does mean something. We're North Floridians. Our kids go to school here. We shop here. We build relationships here. And we honor our commitments. To all of our customers, thanks for trusting us to protect your family, pets, and home. For the elimination of termites, any other pests, and a greener lawn, too, call Paul's. We'll get them all. Hey folks, it's me, Mac and more. Spokesperson for Tallahassee's favorite Apple and Mac product store, Mac and more. We all know what Mac is all about. It's your MacBooks, iMacs, Apple Watch, iPhones, iPads. We've all got them. But what's really cool is the and more. And there's a lot more at Mac and more. They can help set up your new gear, migrate and back up your data, teach you new tricks and how to use everything better. And if something costs too much to fix, they'll tell you the truth. There's a lot more at Mac and more. See for yourself at MacandMoreSystems.com. Or you can take it from me, Mr. Mac and more. Power Mill Training Academy equips motivated athletes focused on baseball and softball with the specific tools to reach their true potential. Now, you'll read that if you go to their website, but I'm here to tell you that, look, whether it's your daughter wanting to play softball, your son wants to play baseball, or maybe they just want to have fun and get the most out of their abilities, and that's where Power Mill comes into play. They've got coaches and camps that teach for every level of play for your son or your daughter. To learn more, go to PowerMillSports.com. 
We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to Orange Theory Fitness fitness.com the jeff cameron show brought to you by orange theory fitness two tallahassee locations midtown on thomasville road and north side in the village common shopping center online at orange theory fitness.com welcome back jeff cameron show 93.3 real talk radio and war chant tv and joining me i'm really excited about this what an opportunity here on the show to bring in the augusta national women's amateur champion lottie woad she's Florida State All-American, many of you know her name already because of her previous successes, but now she is the amateur champion at Augusta National, and she joins us on the Jeff Cameron Show. Lottie, uh, I know you got to be tired of doing interviews, so thank you so much for joining us and doing one more after this amazing accomplishment. Thank you. Yeah. So, all right, I, I've seen everything you've said and read everything you've said and, and watched the other interviews, but I, I do have to ask you, uh, I thought it was fascinating right off the bat that you and your caddy talked about, because of when you teed off and where the pins were, that there was a real good chance somebody was going to catch you and maybe even surpass you. And so I, I, it's a good game plan, right? You're mentally prepared. But I've always thought there's a world of difference between theoretical and maybe this happens and then it does happen, and you're on the course – the back nine at Augusta, and now you're trailing, and you've got to make a push, and you got to you got to make birdies. When it when it happened, take me through your thought process when you first realized what was happening. Yeah, a, a two shot lead is, is is not much to just start the day with, and we, we had talked about um, potentially being overtaken, but obviously I was hoping that wouldn't happen. But um, when it did, um, after I bogeyed thirteen. Um, and got two back, um, it was definitely going to be a struggle coming in, but I knew I kind of got through the tough holes. Um, as long as I had good tee shots on, on all the remaining holes, like they were all good birdie opportunities. So um, I knew if I could give myself some chances, I, I was rolling the ball really well on the greens that I, I could make some putts. So when people are on an unbelievable runs, like Bailey went on an amazing run. And so like when, when that's happening, do, do you, I find that whenever I talk to golfers, especially folks that are at your level, the elite level, they're always worried about their own game. They, they don't worry about what they can't control. Does that hold true here, even in this instance, when there's something so you're, you're this close to something amazing? And does that still hold true? You're just thinking about your own game? Yeah, definitely. You, you can't get too wrapped up in what someone else is doing. Um, I obviously had all the scoreboards, so, so I did know exactly what she was doing, um, which meant I knew I had to make birdies. But um, I was just trying to focus on each shot individually and – um, just trying to give myself chances was really what I could do. Um, and I mean, I didn't expect someone to shoot 66. I was expecting someone to go low, but maybe not bogey free 66, but, um, it made an exciting finish. <laughs> oh, that's for sure. Yes. Yeah, a very exciting finish. I think all of us were nervous for you watching it. You never showed any signs of nerves. Uh, I was, I was amazed at how stoic you remained. Um, really the only reactions I ever saw from you, uh, I think it was on 14, you made the putt and you seemed pretty pumped about that. Um, and then, and then obviously when, when you sink the final putt, you know, it's interesting, you're known, uh, for people that don't know you as a, a great ball striker and, and wildly consistent. And obviously you got a lot of length and, and watching this event, I can see how far you hit the ball. So you put yourself in really good positions. Um, I have a sense that you're really proud of the way you putted here, though. And when you're putting well, how early do you realize, oh, I, I, it's there today? And what does that feel like and look like to you when you know, okay, I, I'm, I'm rolling the flat stick? Yeah, I was definitely very happy with my putting this week. Um, Ten that used to like my long game is is my best part, and generally my putting is is my worst. Um, if I putt okay, like I'm usually doing pretty well in the golf tournament. Um, especially this year, like I had a win in my first event, but um, like apart from that, I've been like, I've been contending every event, but just haven't quite managed to to get it over the line at a couple of second places due to not putting great. So um, after the first round, a championship retreat, um, which are really tricky greens as well. Um, I was putting really good and um, 
was definitely taking confidence from that. Um, the finally I, I'm, I'm holding some parts and I feel like I, I was talking to, to my FSU coach after I was like, pretty much all the parts that I've missed this year all kind of came together this week and went in. <laughs> yeah. So there was retribution and evened out. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious. You mentioned champions retreat. This is a unique event. I'll explain it for our listening audience and viewing audience. Um, you know, you play that before you play Augusta da national and, and you have to you know make the cut, which you have before. Um, but then it's weird. Then you have a, a practice round and you got to sleep on that lead, which you've talked about. And then you got to sleep on it again, which is really weird. Nobody has to do that. Uh, I, I have two questions about that. First, I get the sense from your comments and some others that I've read that perhaps champions retreat is a, a more difficult course. Is that yeah. accurate? Yes, I would say so. Yeah. What's more difficult about it? Is it the greens? Is it the, the, uh, well, listen, Augusta national is very hilly, but it, I'm told champions retreat is too. Yeah. I would say champion retreat is probably a little longer, um, than Augusta, um, have a few longer shots into the greens and, the greens tend to be – they were probably similar this year, but last year they, they were a lot firmer than, than Augusta, and it was kind of difficult to hold the greens. Um, but what made Champions Retreat really difficult this year was uh, the second day. It was 31-hour wins, and the ball was moving all over the place on the greens and off the tee, and it was it was like I was back in England, really. Well, I was just about to say, given where you're from, you're used to being able to play with conditions uh, that are windy like that. Did you feel like that was a, a huge advantage for you? Yeah, definitely. I, I was very happy when I saw the forecast. <laughs> um, it was just like a summer's day in England. Like I, I know how to play knockdown shots. So I've, I've been doing that since I was young. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting. I'm, I'm thinking about how other people might look at that forecast and think oh this is not ideal the course is hard enough as it is and now you got to deal with wins whereas you're looking at it as what an opportunity this is like back home i am, i am kind of curious I, I do know that the combination of champions retreat and augusta national means you have to have the total game that's got to be all the more satisfying for you to know that really it tested every aspect of your game yeah they, they definitely require different things um augusta tends to be a, a drawer's golf course off the tee other than the 18th where you need to hit fade but Champions Retreat kind of has a bit of both. There, there's a couple of really sharp left to right dog legs that I hit driver on and was cutting it around the corner. Um, and if you didn't hit driver, you're going to be quite a long way back. So you definitely have to be able to work it both ways off the tee for both courses. Talking with Florida State All-American Lottie Wood, and more importantly right now, the Augusta National Women's Amateur Champion. You mentioned uh, it tends to be a drawers golf course. I've always, I've never played it. I've been but I, one day, maybe, cross my fingers, uh, I've always heard that the thing you have to be able to do there is to to hit a cut off of a pull draw, uh, lie and vice versa and all that other stuff. Take us through for the for the folks that are listening that watch the event and know that it's extremely difficult. Is it that much more extreme than other places that you've won at, like Carnoustie? Yeah, um, it's definitely different to how it looks on TV. W when you get there, uh, my first time last year, um, it was a lot tighter than than I originally thought. Uh, dog legs are a lot sharper and a lot more undulating. You're hitting a lot of raised greens. You can you can either be able to uh, have a lot of spin and hit high to to stop it. Um, and yeah, just that that like 18 t shot in particular, like you see on TV, how tight it looks, and then you get there, and you're like, well, this is even tighter than than it looks. And um, you've got to just like hit it off the bunker and hope it cuts and the ball kind of disappears. You don't even really see it land and you just hope it's on, it's on the fairway. It's harrowing. Uh, listening to you describe it, it's harrowing, especially for, for people that don't know, you birdied three of the last four holes. You birdied the last two. Now there have been people uh, in the men's game, for example, Charles Schwartz birdied the last four before winning, but he won by two. Arnold Palmer, I think is the only guy that went birdie birdie to win by one in 1960. I don't know if you know that. Uh, and now you, and now you've done it, uh, which is really quite amazing. But I, I am curious after you birdie to tie, and now you know, you need birdie to win. I, I guess I think about tee shots differently than you think about tee shots. I'm thinking I would be shivering, shaking, whereas you're just trying to execute. And boy, did you ever execute on that uh, drive. It's way down there. You're set up perfect. You had to be very proud of that moment. Yeah, I, I was driving it really well a week. So so I, I was feeling as confident as, as uh, possible on that tee shot. Um, but when I hit it, I knew it was perfect. And, and, it, and it went a long way down there. I only had like 125 in with that front pin on the, with the backstop behind. So once you kind of got the t-shirt out of the way, I was like, well, this is, this is definitely a birdie opportunity now.
And so you were you rarely see people where you were on 18 for that putt. A lot of times you see it on the other side. So that was intentional. That wasn't just a good miss. That was where you were aiming, right? Yeah, I was the wind was left to right. So I was I was pretty much just aiming at the pin and if it moved a little bit to the right, it was still gonna be fine. And it stayed there and landed about pin high and then stopped kind of with the backstop and it left me a, a really good look. Circling back, last couple of things. Again, I love picking the brain of a champion here. I so I mentioned what a unique event it is, the two different courses and qual, you know. Was it I know you answered this for Amanda, but I, I am curious about the how you had to sleep on the lead not once but, but twice, two days. And how much fun could you actually have in between? Uh were you able to enjoy the festivities? <laughs> yeah, I uh I slept pretty good for the for the practice day. Um so I was play, I was just playing the practice round, but um I I obviously was enjoying playing August National. I, I think it's quite hard hard to not, but I was definitely a lot uh, very focused in that in that practice round and we actually got the opportunity to uh play the par free course afterwards oh, cool. um but it, i opted out of that because it was straight after my round and i wanted to um go do some putting um because the greens were different which, which ultimately paid off so I, I was kind of just um focusing on on the next round really how difficult it is is it uh to be in the moment each and every time you looked like you had no nerves whatsoever. I know that can't be true, but it looked like you had no nerves as you sat over that putt on 18 with a chance to be the champion. It looked it look, it wasn't effortless, but it looked like you were just oozing confidence. Yeah, I, I was just trying to go go through the same routine that I'd done on all the other parts and um I had I had two for the playoffs, so so that was that was in the back of my mind too too with that putt being um very quick down the hill. Um but it was it was honestly a pretty good putt to leave. I, I probably couldn't leave it short. Um so I knew it, it would have a chance and it it was kind of a double breaker, like a right a right half putt. Um broke right at the uh, broke left at the start and then and then came back at the end. And it was one of the easier parts probably probably on the green. So it's interesting. You're not thinking necessarily, I mean it- I may be phrasing this wrong, but you're not necessarily thinking about making it. You're giving yourself the best chance to make it. And you know, you have two to, to, to tie, right. To, to, to force a play. So you're going to be all right. You're not thinking about, I need to make this. Yeah. I mean, I, I was obviously trying to make the part, um, yeah, sure. but, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a must make that I had to make that for the playoff. It, it, it was more just sign it on a good line, good pace and <laughs> letting the hole get in the way. That's awesome. Final thing, Lottie, I am, I am curious. You're, you're winning a lot now and you're, you're very successful. Uh, do we want to work on uh, like a signature move? Is there going to be something that you do and develop over? I know you laughed at Tiger Woods fist pump and Jack's holding up of the, you know, you, the most you we ever see from you is you uh, maybe walk it in every now and again. We got to develop something, don't we? Or is that just not you? Yeah, no, I, I don't really like um, doing <laughs> massive fist pumps. Um, I kind of like just staying, staying kind of level-headed and not getting too ahead of myself. <laughs> I also feel like doing a massive fist bump. I'm like, that's a little embarrassing for me. So, <laughs> um, I, I I do like a little like if I'm uh, playing well, just just the the ball looks like it's going in like a foot, two feet out. I do like a little like step in. Um, that's that's what I was doing on a few of them. But on the 18th, I did do like a little clench. The fist bump didn't really like go above my waist, but it, I saw it. I saw it. I thought for you that was a, an outrageous show of emotion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Lottie Wood, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for making time. I know Seminoles everywhere were so proud of you, and obviously everybody who loves to watch you play is celebrating the moment. So congratulations, and uh, take care. We'll talk to you down the line. Alexander Christian, 37 years old, is behind bars after being accused of trying to kill his roommate. Officers responded to the 3000 block of Park Ridge Drive regarding a person who had just been stabbed. Once officers arrived, they located the roommate inside of the home on his stomach, unable to move with significant blood on the back of his neck and bed, consistent with being stabbed and beaten. Christian told officers the roommate was calling him derogatory terms that night. He had had enough, stating he snapped. Christian admitted to hitting his roommate on the head 10 times with a skillet, causing him to believe the roommate had lost consciousness. Christian told 
told officers that when he left the bedroom and grabbed a butter knife from the kitchen, he returned and proceeded to stab the roommate four times in the head. He was aiming for the roommate's eye with the intent to kill him. The roommate was left with non-life-threatening injuries. Christian was taken to Leon County Jail without further incident. This is Rachel and A with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. A tornado watch remains in effect. A flood watch begins at 4 p.m. this afternoon. A wind advisory begins at 8 p.m. tonight. Daytime highs approaching 79 this afternoon. Under overcast skies, winds out of the south 10 to 20 miles per hour. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Currently, it's 79 degrees. Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. There he is. Haven't seen this guy since, what was it? Oh, shoot. You two at the Sphere in Las Vegas, baby. Hey, how about that, man? Wasn't that fun? Good show. Good show. Everything about it, nearly perfect. Nearly perfect. I had everything I could possibly want. I wanted one thing, couldn't find it, and I looked everywhere. No Cubans. What do you mean? There no was Cubans. There was Cubans. No, I didn't see any Cubans. Dude, no. I'm sure there was Cubans there. I mean, no. you know. No. I walked around. There was a moment right before the show. I thought, got to find some Cubans. Nothing. Dude, there's Cubans. There was Cubans. I'm sure there was Cubans. In Las Vegas? In Las Vegas. No Cubans in Vegas. There's Cubans in Vegas, man. Eddie, there were no Cubans. Jeff. The sandwich. There were no Cuban sandwiches. You're Cuban. Of course I know there were Cubans there. Oh, the sandwich. Yeah, no, there probably wasn't many there in Vegas. No Cubans. No, not yet. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3. Very quick reminder for all of you, my friends at Social Kitchen. Market, catering, steaks, goodness, all of it. It's there for you. You've got traditional food served at the Masters while watching the golf tournament. You can bring that tradition home to the house beginning this week. In fact, it's available for pickup starting tomorrow. At Social Kitchen off of Carrie Forest. Here it is. Chicken salad, egg salad, pimento cheese, sweet and salty kettle chips, slider rolls, chocolate chip cookies, and your choice to include a cheese charcuterie board as well. Package feeds up to four to six people. It's for the Masters. Make sure you do it. Go by, pick it up off of Carrie Forest between 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. or at the banquet space at the Capital City Country Club, by the way. We know all about that, our friends over there, between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. You can pick it up Thursday. You can pick it up Friday. You can even pick it up on Saturday if you're getting down for the weekend. Make sure you order two days prior to your selected pickup date. So get to ordering now, and they'll put it together for you. It's tasty. It's delicious. And we thank them. That was uh, fun talking to her, by the way. Lottie is uh, humble for such a great player. Indeed. Uh, but knows that if she can putt the ball, it's your ass. That's not what she said. No, but. You could tell she's like, well, if I start making some putts, I'm going to drive the ball. I'm going to strike the ball. You're dead. Uh, by the way, congrats, congratulations, uh, speaking of golf, to uh, Luke Clanton, who becomes the first Noel ever to win three consecutive college events. Just won this week again. So I had some good ones to play around here. A couple of them will be, well, at least one of them. One of them is playing at Augusta. And what do you think about Brooksy this week? I know it's a major, so apparently he has to show up. He played terrible down in Doral just a week ago, so I don't know. He might be working on stuff for Augusta. That's now we do know that true. <laughs> a peek behind the curtain. He he damn near won in Texas uh four or five years ago. While preparing for shots he has to yeah. hit at Augusta. <laughs> so I was listening to uh, a podcast that we both very much like on the plane this morning. Mm -hmm. And and Brooks 
data the last five uh, masters that he's been in. Don't make any sense. They're so good. Well, it's really good in a lot of ways, but the putting isn't. But you can see outliers in the putting performance. One year was the the one he couldn't walk. You know, he couldn't mm. walk the course at all. Yeah. And another was there there was an injury concern as well. Um, if he puts, he's got a chance. The question is, is this course, and if you're trying to handicap it out there right now, I know people want your picks. The players say it's really firm. This it won't is, be much longer. It's going to rain on Thursday. This is as well. How does it retain the water? That's the question. So Thursday, Friday are supposed to be gusty as hell. Like tomorrow. I can't believe it is tomorrow. Wow. It's tomorrow. tomorrow. Buddy. It's tomorrow. So the storms tomorrow are going to be nasty. But apparently when the storms clear, the wind on Friday is going to be worse. So you've got wet weather and then you've got windy weather. So it's going to be British open for the first two days. And then it's going to be pristine still conditions on the weekend. It's about who survives the first two days so they can thrive in the last 36 holes. I, Brooks can do it, but there's a lot of other guys who are built for that. Something like that. Really weird um, weekend. It's not like you can just look at the world golf rankings and say, okay, well, here's my list or whatever. I don't do that anyhow, but some people do because this is an invitational past champions are invited back, even when they're 40 years past their prime and you know, all this stuff. So the field's different, and people want my picks. I, It depends on what you're doing. Are you talking about DFS? Are you talking about a one-off to win? Like, if you want a long shot to win it, and you got a chance to make a lot of money, I mean, would you just sprinkling pizza money, Shane Lowry's a good pick. Mm -hmm. Shane Lowry loves inclement weather. He's in good form. He's got top 20 finishes here each of the last four years. He's... Uh, so his game's solid right now, and he likes the course, and he's going to get his rain and wind, and he's really good. If if you're hitting into a soft green, he's really good. Uh, so you could you know sprinkle some pizza money on Shane Lowry for a top twenty or as a winner. Um, I did the same with Matthew Fitzpatrick. If you're going to take guys from Ireland or England, places where they've played in the wind, we just got done talking about it with Lottie. You if you're going to be dealing with poor conditions at any point, then you want somebody that can keep it low in the wind, and and you know. Play target practice with these soft greens. Uh, you want to take a real flyer on a top 20, a guy who's a real scorer, who's who, who hits more, you know, ends up with more eagles than most in the field. The problem is he also has a lot of bogeys. But Trey Jones used to tell me all the time, you know, when you're, when you're placing long shot bets, look at guys that birdie and eagle a lot of holes because all it takes for them is to get right for one weekend with the putter. Usually that's what holds shot makers back is that they can – they hit it further than most people. They get their opportunities. They just don't make putts, and so they fall back and they lose strokes to the field. But guys that birdie and eagle a lot of holes, on a given Saturday or Sunday, if they make a few putts and they just don't lose strokes to the field, they could win. Well, Taylor Moore can do that, and I know that you wouldn't take Taylor Moore. Most people wouldn't, but they uh, wouldn't take Steven Yeager either. That's hey, right. Yeah. I had Bhatia as my third pick last week in my draft, and he won. Now, I did not bet him to win the tournament in the picks I gave out. So I, don't, I had Corey Connors to maybe sprinkle a little in there. By the way, I like Corey Connors' top 20 here as top Canadian. Now, I did do that, so you guys understand. Um, you can you can have a lot of fun with this. You can bet. and I Okay, you want to know? Here you go. Yeah. All right. Uh, top uh, Top South Korean. I took Siwoo Kim. <laughs> okay. Siwoo likes the course. He's played well here in the past. I'm going to take him. Head-to-head, -head, I took Sergio to beat Patrick Reed. I took Corey Connors as the top Canadian. I took uh, uh, Thorsborg Olsen uh, to be the top Scandinavian. I took uh, – <laughs> You're the United Nations over here. I, well, I do this every week. I'll take top Asian. I'll take top Korean. I'll take top Canadian, top American, top – yeah, it's it, – they have it for every category. Gambling's awesome, guys. Now, I'm not saying you should do it. If you can't do it, don't do it. And if you don't have the money, definitely don't do it. But if you can and you want to have a little fun, pizza money's good. they got a lot of cool things here. So here's a question mark player, hmm. and you love him. He's he's. Uh, I like Zalatoris this week to play skinny well. Skinny as a bean pole. Zalatoris will play well. He has, uh, of the top five years, the second best putting data. Will Zalatoris does second best putting data at Augusta. Now, the difference is, here's the X factor. He's now gone to the full length under the chin putter. I, so what do you make of it? Do you just throw out all that good? You know he's going to strike the ball well. He is. Do you throw out the putting data? Or do you believe that even though he switched, he could still no, I like, roll it well enough? I, I like Zalatoris this week as a top 20 pick. Okay. 
You probably get a good number on that. You can the better the one of the better numbers numbers you're ever going to get for Will Zalatoris in a top twenty. Yeah, I, I I think it's um it's fun. I, top twenty bets, top ten bets, top five bets. Sprinkle it out, spread it out, hey, have some fun with it. Go with your hunches. That's all how those I made. Uh, I made a lot of money on Brooks last year because I knew, look, man, he's Mister Major here at Augusta, and I played him twenty ten five win. There it is. There, well, that's how I made second. all my money on Jaeger. I did that top 20, because 10, 5 win. You're never going to get better odds on Brooks again, I didn't think, unless he falls off, at which point it's a moot bet. But that's what you're betting here is, is his career over or is he still in the running? There are dudes like that. Cam Smith is a player you could look at. Cam Smith, one of the better players at Augusta before he decided to go live. Man, he hasn't done a thing at live. Uh, attention, Florida. Are you a victim of an auto accident? We introduce our live chat sponsor, Ison Legal Law Firm, dedicated to representing injured clients statewide. If you've been in an accident, call Ison Legal Law Firm at 813-803-0733 for a free consultation. Remember, there's no cost to you unless they win. Your interests come first with Heisen Legal Law Firm, the name you can trust for justice. Call 813-803-0733 or visit HeisenLegalLawFirm.com. Heisen Legal Law Firm, your advocate in times of need, offices Tampa. Nice read. Oh, we're still here. We're going all the way. I see what you were doing there. <laughs> I was trying to get us to. <laughs> I was helping you out. <laughs> But if you want, we'll stay right here. We could keep it here. You keep it right here. Not saying about my friends at Tried and True Consulting. It's a payment and business solutions company owned by fellow Knowles. As a Knowles business owner, they're committed to reducing costs and increasing your bottom line. That's a good thing to tell you about. They give back 10% of their net revenue at Tried and True Consulting to the battle's end. How about that? Get the trifecta today. Scan the QR code that you see that we pop up in between breaks all the time. There it is right in front of you. You're in the chat. Learn about them or call Joe or Don today. 844-464-6653. Go tried in true consulting. It's been a busy day. It's been a fun day. It's good to be back. Fresh on the heels of Knowles kicking ass. We got the Canes coming into town. Hopefully whoop their ass too. We got football. We got it all. There's so much information going on right now. You know, Major League Baseball crunching what happens on a day-to-day basis. That's a grind because, you know, Florida State Baseball takes precedent last night over Mets Atlanta. The Braves do win 6-5. But then also in hockey, that second wild card battle in the East is awesome. There's three, four games left. If you want playoff atmospheres before the playoffs begin, Go check out what's happening in Pittsburgh and Washington on Long Island. It's a lot of good stuff going on right now, and it's uh, it's too much information almost. Lightning with the 5-2 win last night. The hat trick from Stamkos. We've already locked in a playoff spot. Ready to roll, buddy. I'm feeling good. Feeling pretty good with they're, the way they're, they're playing right spot. Yeah, they are starting to play okay. It's starting to happen. Uh, it's, it's exciting. It's fun to talk about. Yeah, no, there's a lot. There's a lot. And we're not far away from uh, the spring game. And, of course, we have our tournament on Friday. We'll be back with you, normal show, uh, tomorrow. And, uh, Tom, I know, like, look, we had a lot to catch up on. I, I mentioned today that we did catch up on some of the headlines. We so. didn't talk about the legal thing either. You brushed uh, past it, and it's because it's not – it's like for 10 minutes it matters. But, yeah, it, it's just crazy. I do know, and we've talked to enough attorneys, um, I just – if you want a big – I'm not – an attorney and I don't want to express an opinion as if it's rooted in like a depth of legal knowledge. It's not, I do have access to attorneys and and friends with several, including my agent and my stepdad. And then people that we use Tom Kowitz and others, Sarah, other, there are a lot of guys that I talk to to try to get a handle on, on what any of these things mean and, I, I always say, look, stay out of the weeds with me here. I understand that you could vet this and go much deeper and talk about nuance. But in terms of the context that I'm trying to lend my audience, what's something that we can take away? And we'll have Tom Quitz back on the show, I think, early next week and get his thoughts on everything. But I will tell you, I, I, this just feels like we're about to see um, this grind to a halt. There's just going to be a lot of slow play. Well, the, this is the the interesting thing is on the one hand you've got appeals processes which that, that are potentially coming yeah muck up the works they do but on the other hand you had the judge yesterday here in Leon County judge almost Cooper, scold the ACC by the way at different times yeah yeah he used some fun language with that 
I can't remember it. I did the video with Ira, but I can't remember it. Point being, he decided to deny their motion to stay. So he's saying, let's proceed in Florida. So on the one hand, you've got appeals coming, but on the other, two states perhaps concurrently running a case, which at that point does become a bit of a foot race as to which ruling would stick and a bit of a rivalry between the two courts, even if that's not what they intend to do. So it's co there are competing forces here, just a lot of competing forces, more than just Florida State and the ACC, and we'll see. Hopefully this gets to the negotiating table here anytime now. I think it's all trending eventually in a good way for Florida State. I don't know how we couldn't see that, but I'm at the ACC yesterday. You know, saying that they would shop our rights and sell it to somebody else themselves. That was one of the more interesting developments in the courtroom was, well, OK, so let's say Florida State pays one hundred thirty million for the exit fee. Uh huh. OK, now they can negotiate their rights. Or, well, yes, your honor. Or, you know, we could just sell them to another network or another entity that would be very interested in Florida State's yeah. rights. Yeah. Nice way to start bargaining by offering creating a third party, a third party that we've got a bid against. Nice job, ACC. I just thought that some of the comments that the judge made, uh, A, were humorous, and and I mean that in a good way, and B, it felt like he was kind of like tisk tisking at times, the ACC is what I'm saying. And, you know, there was that sort of um, kind of preventive litigation, like this idea of, uh, of, of trying to beat somebody to the punch instead of operating yes. on the up and up. <laughs> Forum shopping was, yeah. the, was the term that he used a bunch. But, yeah, he, he called it classic anticipatory legislation. That's what it is. Anticipatory uh, legislation. Uh, that was anticipatory, the actual one. Uh, yeah, yeah, litigation. Yeah. Excuse me. Classic uh, anticipatory litigation is what he said it was. And he cited about nine cases. I think three would have done, Your Honor. But he cited about nine cases to both attorneys uh, saying that, hey, man, we've got federal courts and state courts that say, no, nah, no, nah, just because you're first doesn't, doesn't necessarily make, yeah. mean that you're the forum because – that sometimes there's malice involved with rushing to the courtroom. I do want to, in capping off all that we did today, remind everybody that that statement from Link Jarrett was pretty amazing. I think this is the best atmosphere I've ever coached in or played in in my career. And then you couple that with the shots of the folks in the outfield climbing the fence and leaning up against the the fence out in right field and left field. That was insane. I don't really remember too many moments like that ever, if ever. So I think he's right. That was a fun conversation to have with him today as well. All right, brother, we are out of here. Good work out of you. Good to have you back in studio. Thanks to all of you guys for watching and listening. We appreciate it. We're back with you again tomorrow. Take care. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.